George Herbert, religious poet of the 17th century, has a famous poem called The Collar, meaning the constraining. The, uh, he's harnessed. And he's hemmed in. And he begins the poem, I struck the board and cried, No more. I will abroad. What? Shall I ever sigh and pine? My lines in life are free, free as the road. Loses the wind, largest store. Shall I be still in suit? Have I no harvest but a thorn to let me blood and not restore what I have lost with cordial fruit? Well, the whole poem goes that way. And he, he roars and shouts from beginning to end. Uh, forsake thy cage, thy rope of sands, which petty thoughts have made and made to thee good cable to enforce and draw and be thy law. While thou didst wink and wouldst not see, away, take heed, I will abroad. Call in thy death's head there. But as I raved and grew more fierce and wild at every word, methought I heard one call him. Shot. And I replied, my lord. That's pure sensationalism. But the idea of bursting out, this is the Renaissance idea, Columbus, explore, get out of here, let's get cracking, let's move. And then suddenly, still small voice. This is two modes, isn't it? Juxtapose two modes. Uh, apropos, uh, this is the, in the poem, it suggests the juxtaposition of two uh, disparate modes. But in the painting, I'd like to point out an, a very interesting thing that happens with chiaroscuro. That is the use of modeling from light to dark. Then in such a painting, you have two points of view. Uh, if you have a head, for example, and you light it from one side, the shadow line where the light ceases will constitute the profile if you had been in the position of the light. So he draws the profile from one position as the light defines it, and he draws it from his own position as his eye defines it. So you have these two modes, the done. Whoever comes to shroud me. You know that? Yeah, the famous Dunn poem which begins, Whoever comes to shroud me, do not harm or question much that subtle wreath of hair above mine arm. It is a sound, a sign, the outer form you must not touch. It's a little love knot from the sweetie pie. And to put it in this profound religious context gives you two points of view which are ludicrously incongruous. Also dead in the line, kind of thing. He simultaneously, he sees himself as a corpse being embalmed. But all he's interested in is that little love token on his wrist from his girlfriend. Uh, this creates a kind of sensational illumination of a spiritual condition. But, um, yeah, the discovery, the Renaissance discovery that you could use two points of view to get sensationalism, it's schizoid, split personality. And the split personality comes into Western world with printing and visual space, which splits off from the other senses. Um, this is a medical opinion review on uh, the idea of uh, this uh, schizophrenia coming from print orientation. Clinically, the schizophrenic is not visually oriented. A schizophrenic won't read. He'll only read when he's convalescing. Um, they usually just sit around and listen to auditory. This is, I haven't seen this article, but I'd like to. It uh, sounds very amusing that, that, a, that a schizoid will only read when he's convalescing suggests a very bad conscience indeed about the printed word. I have something to say about that, actually. The, uh, in a, an article called uh, Psychiatry and the Written Word, he points out that the African schizophrenic moves immediately to action. He'll cut off your head or knife you. Whereas his European counterpart goes into privacy, into hallucination, private hallucination, no action. And I think the reason for this is that to the African, there is no possibility of separating himself from his tribe, even in madness. He is part of a corporate life. It's somewhat allied to what you're saying. I, I haven't read that article for a long time. Who's it by again? Do you remember? I forgot to read it. It's a fascinating article. Psychiatry and the written word. I think it's um, certainly in the bibliography of the uh, Gutenberg Galaxy.
I don't know whether many of you have heard about or read about this Esalen Institute uh, out at Big Sur in California. And uh, they, they've taken all kinds of groups out there uh, for a variety of programs, what they call sensitivity training or sensory awareness. And, and the largest part of what they do is, is just to try to make people aware once again that they have a body, that they have senses, and kind of get them to stop being uptight. And, uh, you, you know, well, George Leonard is, uh, Marshall is out there, the senior editor of Look, with whom Marshall has done several uh, pieces. And uh, Mike Murphy is the director of it. He's a fellow who's come out of a, a very strong Oriental uh, Zen background. And it's one of the most interesting places in the country in terms of, of, of the way people finally get a new feel for who they are and start not being afraid of relating to one another. If... Um, if Murphy comes in or Leonard comes in, maybe we could have him talk about it. Have any of you been there by any chance or taken part in anything similar to this? Does it work? I've never been in one. I've observed. I, I led a session about two weekends ago, and uh, it just heightens awareness, enables people to, to listen to uh, pick up how people feel and to trust their own feelings. And if you're honest about yourself, it, it opens up people quite a bit, turns people on.